Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's the first in a short series in which we're going to be upgrading a desktop PC so that it operates more quietly. Specifically, in this first episode, we're going to be fitting this Noctua NHU9S cooler, a very nice piece of kit. But before we open this thing up, let's take a look at the PC we're upgrading so I can explain what this project is all about. Right, here we have the PC we're going to be working on. I purchased this on eBay about a year ago to use in several hardware upgrade videos, and I've now decided to use it in videos where I demonstrate operating systems and applications. Right now, the two PCs I typically use for this purpose are this Odyssey X86J4105, which is a very quiet quad-core Celeron machine, and also my AMD test rig. This has a quad-core A83870K CPU and will continue to be used in some videos. But it's now about 10 years old, and so I thought it was time to have a faster PC for recording some of the software content on this channel. I therefore recently fitted this PC with an i5-10400 CPU, and my project now is to get it running as quietly as possible to reduce fan noise when I'm recording. In order to monitor progress, we're going to be using this sound level meter and this audio recorder. This particular meter displays an absolute noise level in decibels. You can see the meter reading here bouncing around as I'm, as I'm talking, but like many similar devices, it cannot register sounds below 30 dB. And 30 dB is pretty quiet, but it's also loud enough to be problematic when recording audio and I do hope we can get the PC less noisy than 30 dB. However, this may give us a problem when monitoring our progress because we won't see less than 30 dB on this display, it'll just display low, and so what I'm going to do in our tests is to position the meter and recorder very close to the PC like I did here earlier today, and what you're hearing now in the background is the output from the recorder with no noise reduction applied. Here, the PC is running at idle, and as we can see, the sound meter is fluctuating around 42 dB. Over in Windows, Open Hardware Monitor then shows that the CPU is idling along at up to about 26 degrees C. So, this gives us a set of idle base readings before any upgrade, and I'll pause for a second or so so you can listen to the sound the PC is making. Now, of course, things will get noisier and hotter when the CPU is at load and its temperature controlled fans speed up. So here we now are with the PC having been rendering animation for about 20 minutes, with the processor cores running at their maximum turbo speed and their temperature stable at no more than about 47 degrees. In this test, the sound meter is now registering a little higher at around 45 or 46 dB, with the PC's fans making noticeably more noise. Right, having told you what this project is all about, let's move on to the cooler. And here I've been on a bit of a journey because this Noctua NHU9S is not what I initially intended to fit. And this is because my first idea was to make the i5 rig totally silent, just like the quad-core Celeron Mini-ITX PC I built in 2020, and which I use running Ubuntu connected to my television. My initial plan was therefore to fit the i5 with a totally passive CPU cooler, with options including the Silverstone HE02, a no-fan cooler such as their CR80EH, or my preferred choice of an Octua NHP1. However, the more I looked into this, the more I realized that these passive CPU coolers need to be fitted at a desktop PC with excellent airflow. And this can typically only be achieved using one or more case fans. And this means that the PC would not be totally silent even with a silent CPU cooler installed. The CPU compatibility list for Noctua's NHP1 
also reveals that it's not fully compatible with my i5-10400 without the addition of a fan. And this is the case for most medium to high power CPUs. And so in the end, I accepted that the PC will end up with some fans in it and hence decided to complete this project using this active cooler with as quiet a fan as possible. Oh, and along the way, I also realized that a Noctua NHP1 is over 150 millimeters or about six inches high, so was way too tall to fit into my PC case anyway. Hence, here we are with my final choice of an Octua NHU9S in Chromax Black, rather than the usual Noctua colors. This has a 92mm fan, and I know it's very quiet as I have one fitted in the i7 PC I edit most of my videos on. And at about 125mm high, this should fit in my case. We shall see. So, let's get inside. I think we have to switch things around to get to the back. So you can see what's going on. I always like opening Noctua stuff, always very high quality PC components from Noctua. There we are. This is a box of stuff. This will be things, I'm sure. This is the mounting kit and that type of stuff, if I can get inside. Can we get inside? Yes, this will be the mounting kit, all the stuff to actually fit it in the computer, thermal compound, all that kind of stuff, very exciting. And in here we've got the cooler itself which is normally interesting to get out. Oh, it's going to come out. Let's just do a, let's try the other way around. There we are, we've got it out and here it is. And somehow it'll come out the box. This is not sure. Do you like to pack things in the most clever ways possible? Come on, how does it come out? Does it just lift out now? Yes, there we are. Let's put it down over here so we can take a closer look at it. There we are. This is our lovely Noctua NHU9S, for which I paid £62.99 for this version in the, the Chromax Black. And I would have been perfectly happy buying the version in the standard Noctua colours, which is slightly cheaper, but given today's supply chains, this is the only one I could get hold of, so this is the one I got. And you can see on the base there, we've got the metal which will contact the CPU cooler with the thermal paste on. I'll keep the protection on that so we don't uh, damage things. And you can also see here on the base all the heat pipes. This is how this works. Heat pipes here take the heat up into the veins and then that cools things down and obviously the fan blows through the top. So let's put this down like that and applying the magic of filmmaking, let's take a look at the whole kit. Right, it's now time to fit the cooler, so I'll start off by removing the left side of the case. There we go, and you'll see that this case is fitted with one of these CPU ducts. This takes the air from a standard Intel stock cooler and takes it out through the side of the case, but this won't work when we fit a cooler like this. It wouldn't actually fit in with the duct, so I'm going to remove the duct, which just unscrews. And there we are, the duct has gone. That will work when we fit the new cooler. I'll put that down there. And I'm also going to turn the PC over like this, to switch it around like that. And the reason for that is I'm going to remove the other side as well. There we are, that's come off too. And the reason for that is that we need to get to the other side of the motherboard to fit this cooler. We've got a plate which will fit over here, but before we can do that, we need to remove the old cooler, so the PC needs to be turned back the other way up. And there we go. And I'm now also going to remove the memory, the RAM from the computer, because it's very close to our working area, moving and replacing the cooler. So I'll just flick the little levers like that and take out the memory modules. And we'll now unplug the existing coolers fan connector from down here, like that. And we can now remove the cooler itself, which we do by taking a flat-ended screwdriver and twisting the push pins at each of the corner of the cooler so they are released. So I'll get on with that. There we go, the push pins are now all 
released. I think those are all three. Yes, they are. So we should now be able to lift out the cooler, but it's always worth giving it just a little rotate first because sometimes the uh, thermal compound is that out. It isn't. There we are. And oh yes, we're out. As he said that, it's come straight out nice and cleanly. We've removed the old cooler from the computer. Next, we have the horrible task of removing the remaining thermal compound from the top of the processor. We need to get this nice and clean. I don't know if there's a perfect way of doing this, but I do it initially with a small piece of cardboard to remove the worst of it. And then I use a rag with a small bit of white spirit on to clean things up and I polish things off after that. So I'll get on in high speed with that process. And here we are, nice and clean. I just finish off with the finger of a, a trusty white cotton glove. So many uses for a white cotton glove. And there we are. I think that's nice and clean and ready for us to fit the new cooler. Talking of which, here's all the parts that came in the Noctua kit. And these include various instruction leaflets that tell you how to fit the cooler in different computers with different processors and processor sockets. So for example, here we're fitting the cooler in a computer with an LGA 1200 Intel socket, so I'll follow these instructions. And the instructions let you know which parts are needed for your particular installation. You don't need all of the parts in any installation. It's not like, for example, putting together flat pack furniture. Here, some parts should be left over at the end. And here, they are these parts, which we don't need, so I'll get them out the way. And there's also here something called a noise limiter, which can be fitted with in line with the fan cable to slow down the fan. I'm not going to be fitting that. I'll control the fan speed if necessary using the computer's BIOS. But uh, everything else here we need. This is our mounting hardware we'll use in a second. Very exciting special screwdriver bar thing. Here's a thermal compound we'll be using. And of course the cooler itself from which we now need to remove the uh, cover over the base. And we also should remove the fan which just uh, on clips like that just because this will make things easier to fit. If we can get the uh, clip out. Come on, clip. There we are. The uh, cooler is now ready to be fitted with everything else here. So, with the PC upstanding on the desk, we can now take this base plate and fit it through the back of the motherboard. And it's important to note, you must put it in the right way up, which is like this, so that these holes and this notch align with the bolts in the stock Intel base plate. Next, we need to return to the top of the motherboard and to fit some spacers, some mounting bars and some thumb screws. There we go. And a key thing here is to make sure the thumb screws are not too tight. And we can now put the computer back lying flat on the desk, which makes things so much easier to work with. These Noctua coolers are far easier to fit when the motherboard isn't mounted in the computer. But regardless, we've now got the mounting bars in place for the cooler, which will go in something like that. But before we fit it, we need to put on some of this thermal compound. So let's say hello once again to our happy friend, the i5 microprocessor. Hello, microprocessor. Would you like some thermal paste? Yes, it says. We need to put a little blob on here, always less rather than more. I think this is going to be OK. So we can now lower the cooler down into position. It has two points of contact with its screws on each side. And we fasten them in using the clever little bar. The trick is to do a few turns on each side as we go. And there we are. I'm happy with that. We've now fitted the new cooler. So, I think the next thing I'm going to do is to put back in the RAM. There we go. And we now need to fit the fan, all things falling down over there. The fan has to go on so airflow goes through the cooler like this. And somewhere on here there is an arrow, so it has to fit like that way to go across like that. So that's what we will do. There we are. These things are tricky enough to fit at the best of times. When they're black with black, and you try not to get in the way on camera, it's even worse. But there we are, that's fitted. And now plug in the fan wire. There's no way you're going to see me doing this, but it goes down here. There we are. And lo and behold, we have fitted the new Noctua cooler. And so if I put the sides back onto the case, we're all now ready to run some more tests.
Greetings. Here I am back again. I've now got the PC up and running and I've entered its BIOS. And I did that by pressing the F2 key and it's normally the F2 key or the delete key or the escape key to enter a PC's BIOS. And in most BIOSes today, you'll find some sort of hardware monitoring section like we're in here, where I can see the speed of the CPU fan. That's the cooler on the CPU we just fitted. We can also see the speed here of the chassis fan and the temperature of the CPU, just over 25 degrees C, and also of the, the motherboard itself. And in pretty much any BIOS these days, you'll have the ability to set the speed of the fan at different temperatures. And indeed, if your PC is making a lot of noise, the first thing to do is not to start fitting new coolers and go into all that hassle and expense. It's to have a look in your BIOS and see if you can change settings there to get things more to your liking. So we'll just have a look at the uh, graphical implementation of that here, as you can see. And if we go into the CPU fan, you'll see it's currently set on a silent profile which basically means at up to 20 degrees C here, it'll be running the fan at 20% speed. And then by 70 degrees, it's running at 70% speed. And then by 75 degrees, getting rather hot, it's going to be running at 100% fan. The fan's going to be on, on full pelt. And this curve is pretty typical. It's not that different from a standard performance curve or even the performance performance curve. It's obviously very different from the full speed curve will stay on the silent curve. And if you're wondering, I was on my silent setting before I changed the CPU cooler. So let's come out of this and go across to a shot of the level meter and the recorder. And we're now hearing the recording made by the recorder, so you can get a feel of how noisy the PC now is. And as you can see, the sound meter is now bounding around at about 35 dB rather than 42 dB at idle as we had previously. So we've got a bit of noise reduction has gone on, although the main thing I'm very aware of now is that most of the noise coming from this computer is now coming from its power supply fan rather than from its CPU cooler. Really, right now, this is a project which is only half completed. If we bring up Open Hardware Monitor running on the Windows desktop, we can see that we've got our CPU package at uh, now says 24 degrees, but roughly what we saw in, in the BIOS earlier. The CPU cores are clearly idling along. And I'm sure you'd like to know what would happen when we run the CPU at full load. So I'm going to run up over here a little script which runs something called LightWave ScreamerNet, which is a renderer which is going to start rendering out animation frames. You can see our CPU cores have leapt up to going at a full speed. So we'll let the CPU cores be busy for a good 20 minutes. And here I am back again over half an hour later, where we can see that the CPU package is running at up to about 42 degrees C. It was running at about 47 degrees C at load previously. And if we look across to the level meter, it's hovering around at about 43, 44 dB compared to about 45, 46 dB at load previously. But I'm absolutely convinced that most of the noise being made by this PC is now coming from its power supply. So there we are. We've taken the PC's idle noise level from this to this. And in the next and final episode of this series, we'll make things even quieter by fitting this rather nice low noise power supply and also some new case fans. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.